right now on five on your side at 10. Autumn chill. The areas that could see temperatures down into the 30s for the first time this year. And tonight, the forecast in Florida breeding fear, bracing for Hurricane Ian, millions evacuating. And this is the type of storm surge that, that, that is life threatening. St. Louisans already traveling to Tampa to help with the aftermath. We expect those numbers to grow throughout the week, especially depending on what the hurricane does and, and the type of damage that happens. First tonight, breaking news about your St. Louis Cardinals. Break out the champagne. For the first time since 2019, the Redbirds are National League Central champs. They clinched the division in Milwaukee minutes ago, and sports director Frank Cusimano is here with more on the cards. Chase for a championship. Frank? Thank you, Ann. How would you like to be a fan of the Brewers? You have to watch your arch nemesis clinch the division in your backyard. The Cardinals are the Brewers' worst nightmare, and tonight, some more dreams were realized. The Cardinals led it 2 to nothing in the fourth inning when Andrew yeah, Kiss delivers the key blow of the game, a two-run homer, his third of the year, and the Cardinals led it four to nothing. Miles Michaelis was brilliant on the hill. Six innings, four hits, nine Ks, and only one earned run allowed. Ryan Helsley will get the final out. The Cardinals win it six to two. It's their 12th National League Central Division title. And Aramad Hicks is in Milwaukee. He will join us in a few minutes with a post-game celebration. Frank, thank you. For the latest on the Cardinals playoff push and how to get tickets, text the word CARDS to 314-425-5355. Hurricane Ian is now bearing down on Florida. The effects are already being felt in the Florida Keys. Here's a live look at Key West. You can see heavy, heavy rains. There's winds and surf at the southernmost point landmark. The Category 3 storm is expected to strengthen into a Category 4 hurricane before making landfall tomorrow. It's now on a collision course with Central Florida. Evacuation orders are now in effect from Fort Myers to Tampa. Authorities warn the biggest threat will be the life-threatening storm surge. It is a big storm. Uh, it is going to kick up a lot of water as it comes in, and you're going to end up with really significant storm surge. You're going to end up with really significant flood events. Uh, and this is the type of storm surge that, that, that is life threatening. Forecasters say the surge could go as high as 10 feet. For the latest on Ian's track, let's get straight to Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell. And that storm surge is actually going to focus a little farther south of Tampa now. It looks like the storm is going to track closer to Fort Myers at this point. It has not weakened this evening, even though it's undergone an eye wall replacement cycle, which means the eye got bigger. And now the outer eye wall has just kind of spread those stronger winds out even farther. But at the same time, you're not losing the inner circle of 120 mile per hour sustained winds as that continues to move off just to the east of north right now at 10 miles per hour. So the latest track that just came in from the National Hurricane Center has it just offshore of Fort Myers and Port Charlotte around 8 o'clock tomorrow morning with winds of 130 miles per hour and higher gusts along into the north of the storms track where the eye goes ashore. That's where the worst of it will be. And that's also just north of the storm where you will see the strongest and heaviest rainfall. It moves across Florida by Thursday at 8 p.m. It's moving off as a tropical storm and then eventually ends up in the southeast. So what are the Florida impacts? Well, that storm surge is really bad. The coastal areas will be inundated and especially from Venice to south of Fort Myers looks to be the worst of it. 15 to 25 inches of rainfall locally higher amounts. Major inland flooding is expected with this and the worst of the wind damage is going to be near the center of the storm, but there will be wind damage across much of the state of Florida, at least on the peninsula. We will see in a few minutes. We'll talk about our weather impacts here. Tonight, Red Cross volunteers from Missouri are headed to Florida to help. Right now, they're on standby just outside of the storm's path. Five on your side's Laura Barcheski talked with them just a few hours ago. Laura? And some of the Red Cross volunteers from Missouri are staying around Orlando right now. Staging and getting assignments and an emergency response vehicle from St. Louis will also be on the way soon. It's been a busy few weeks for the Red Cross. It seems like everything just hit within the last couple of weeks with the typhoon in Alaska, the hurricane in Puerto Rico, and then the wildfires out west. 
and now Hurricane Ian is expected to hit Florida. The wind is always a uh, difficult aspect of it. Water, of course, so you have wind and water damage combined, and of, that, you know, a lot of times is putting people completely out of their homes. Maybe their homes completely gone. Five volunteers from Greater St. Louis Red Cross are on the way to lend a helping hand. And then we have about 13 other people who are in uh, a standby mode. We expect those numbers to grow throughout the week, especially depending on what the hurricane does and, and the type of damage that happens. St. Louis and Nick O'Hanlon is one of the Red Cross staff members already in place, and he'll be on the support team. Supporting our uh, field teams with ensuring that they have the supplies uh, and the people to be able to meet uh, the needs of the community, whether that be supporting a uh, evac center, feeding routes, um, or damage assessments, whatever that may be. Right now, they're focused on shelters and making sure they have supplies before the storm hits. We are getting our volunteers uh, in, in, in the community uh, to, to those evac centers or in their kind of their, their place of uh, shelter over the next couple of days while the storm passes through um, to make sure that they're safe. Then after the storm, they'll pick up the pieces. Two more St. Louis volunteers are bringing down an emergency response vehicle Thursday. And that vehicle will be there um, available to provide food and water and ba basically take those supplies out into the community to people who maybe haven't been able to get to a shelter. Now, if you'd like to help, you can always sign up to be a volunteer or donate. Financial donations are the best option right now. You can find a link to the Red Cross on KSDK.com. Laura, thank you. For the latest on Hurricane Ian, stay with us on air on KSDK.com and the Five on Your Side app. Tonight, the future of a longtime Catholic high school in St. Louis is in jeopardy. Officials at St. Mary's High School say they were notified by the Archdiocese about its plans to close the all-boys school in May. This comes as the Archdiocese is working to restructure parishes and schools because of low enrollment. In a statement, the school officials say they're surprised and disappointed by the decision. They're now working with influential alumni and business leaders to explore operating as an independent school. St. Mary's has been a fixture in the Dutchtown neighborhood since 1931. A big crowd tonight at the Fox C6 School District's job fair in Jefferson County. As our Robert Townsend reports, administrators hope this large turnout will help them put a big dent in their bus driver shortage. It's been more than a month since the new school year kicked off here in the Fox C6 School District and school officials are still sounding the alarm. They need workers, especially school bus drivers. I'm looking forward to dealing with kids. Tabitha Thatcher answered the call. The South St. Louis mom applied for a bus driver position. It's kind of like driving a suburban. Had an on the spot interview and then got behind the wheel of a school bus for a test drive. And turn. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it's not that hard to do. Um, the air brake system, it's a little getting used to, but otherwise it drives smoothly. The Fox C6 School District currently has 18 schools and 11,000 students. The district had to make cuts to bus service this year due to a driver shortage. Currently, there are more than 30 jobs opened in the district. Custodians and bus drivers are our two biggest needs, but we need we have needs in um, food service, teachers' aides. Tonight, dozens of people showed up for the district's two-hour job fair. I believe the school districts are... Um, very good to start with. Jacqueline Allen applied for two positions, a teacher's aide and a food service worker. You get off on holidays and you, <laughs> you have your summertime. That's benefits. I want to have a job that's going to fulfill my soul. Enthusiastic applicants now ready to make a difference. Robert Townsend, five on your side. For a complete list of job openings in the Fox C6 School District, go to KSTK.com and look for this story under the As Seen on TV section. Tonight, an arrest in a major case squad investigation in St. Anne. Hours ago, police arrested 30-year-old James Cody on first-degree murder charges. Investigators say a track phone traces him to a deadly shooting on Douglas Court Saturday night. Terrence Washington was found shot to death on the front porch of a home. According to court documents, Cody and Washington knew one another from prison. A Metro East man accused of dousing his girlfriend in gasoline before killing her mother in a fire has been charged with first degree murder. Prosecutors say last Friday, Michael Sloan Jr. zip tied his girlfriend's wrists, poured gas on her and also held a knife to her throat. She escaped. Prosecutors say Sloan then went to his girlfriend's mother's home in Troy, Illinois and set it on fire. An autopsy revealed the mother, Suzanne Tomlinson, died of smoke inhalation. 
The St. Louis County man convicted of killing his nine-year-old son will spend the rest of his life in prison. Maybe he'll get a chance to think while he's locked up away from society about his actions. For the next that was the reaction from the mother of Christian Ferguson just moments after her ex, Dewan Ferguson, was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. A jury convicted him in July of the 2003 murder of Christian. He told investigators his son was in the back of his SUV when it was carjacked. His body has never been found. Prosecutors say Ferguson declined a deal for a lighter sentence. Instead, he asked for time served. Obviously, we walked out, but it gives you a window into the, the, the monster that, that we were dealing with. Ferguson was also sentenced to life in prison for molesting two of his ex-wife's relatives. He will serve those sentences consecutively. Developing tonight, for the second time in a week, the water towers in Moscow Mills are depleted. The city continues to deal with water pump issues. Crews are hoping to have a fix overnight. Residents are under a boil order until Thursday at noon. They're also being asked to conserve water. A bumper stumper for our Verify team. We live in two plate states. The suspicion you could give police by only having one on your car. Winter woes, heating costs are soaring. Tonight, we're getting answers from Spire on the hit your wallet could take. And you may be tempted to turn on the furnace tonight. The coldest temperatures in five months tomorrow morning. Tonight, a major cleanup is underway in Warrington after a minivan crashed into a hotel room. It happened at the Baymont Inn and Suites on Veterans Memorial Parkway. No one was hurt. A St. Louis County resident says he's seeing more and more cars without a front license plate. He wants to know if it's required. Let's verify. Here's Jack's question. Are front license plates required by law in Missouri? The Verify team is fact-checking this for Missouri and Illinois. Our sources, the Missouri State Highway Patrol, Missouri Law, the Illinois State Police, and Illinois Law. Both Missouri and Illinois are two-plate states, meaning the law requires all passenger vehicles have a front and rear license plate. Not having both is a primary violation, meaning police will pull you over for it. Corporal Dallas Thompson told me troopers pull people over for plate violations quite often, and traveling without both plates is, quote, very good probable cause to make a stop. He says recent large-scale drug busts started with a license plate violation. There are a few exceptions in both states for motorcycles, autocycles, trailers, buses, and semi-trucks. And some of you may be thinking, I have a car that doesn't have holes in the front to attach a license plate. Our sources say the car probably came from a one-plate state, and you'll need to drill holes in your front bumper for a license plate bracket. We can verify in both Missouri and Illinois, the law requires passenger cars have both a front and rear license plate. License plate frames are legal in both states as long as the plate and expiration stickers are visible. What can I verify for you? Send me an email, verify at ksdk.com. Hurricane Ian is impacting oil production in the Gulf of Mexico. BP and Chevron have evacuated a dozen platforms in the Gulf. More than 10% of production has been sidelined. But analysts don't believe the storm will have a major impact on global oil prices. More of your money will go towards heating your home this winter. Tonight, we have some answers from Spire about reports of natural gas prices soaring more than 34%. The utility confirms rates will increase this winter. But how much? Spire is still determining. Officials are hopeful customers in St. Louis will not see as big as a hike as the rest of the nation. Luckily, here in the St. Louis area, the east side of the state, that we have the lowest natural gas prices in the state and the bi-state region. That's currently what our customers are paying now. So any increase will be starting from, from a lower, lower end than, um, than other companies. Spire does offer assistance programs. Both Missouri and Illinois also offer help. To see if you qualify, go to the As Seen on TV section at KSDK.com. Homemade versus store-bought baby food. Which is safer? The answer might surprise you. Consumer Reports digs deep into a new report to help parents feed their kids the healthiest and safest foods possible. Here's Mike Bush. Alondra Alberti loves to make her own baby food for her six-month-old daughter, Rain. I'm a first-time mom and I really wanted to feel more connected to my baby. She also yeah. trusts what she makes more than store-bought baby food. I worry about what's in store baby food all the time because 
I just don't know what to trust, what's in the soil where that product is being raised. But according to a new report from Healthy Babies Bright Futures, homemade baby food might pose some of the same problems as store-bought. When it comes to detectable levels of heavy metals, the report found that homemade baby food is no safer than store-bought. Those heavy metals include lead, arsenic, cadmium, and mercury. The biggest offender, foods made from rice, like rice puffs and rice cereals. While heavy metals naturally exist in the environment, most metals in food come from farming practices or industrial pollution and certain ingredients like rice or spinach are more likely to absorb certain metals. Exposure to heavy metals in children has been linked to behavioral issues, lowered IQs, and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. The Food and Drug Administration has announced plans to set limits on metals in certain foods, but until that takes effect, there are ways for parents to keep their children's food safe. Variety is key. Try to make sure your kids eat a healthy variety of foods. Which is why Alondra makes sure to feed Rain a healthy variety of fruits and vegetables, like broccoli, avocados, and sweet potatoes. She loves sweet potatoes, so what I do is that I mix sweet potato with a little bit of raspberries. Focus on meals made with foods that tend to have lower levels of heavy metals, such as bananas, oranges, eggs, and meats. In addition, eat fresh or frozen fruits instead of canned. Replace infant rice cereal with infant oatmeal. Peel sweet potatoes and carrots to lower heavy metal levels and offer tap water instead of fruit juices. Mike Bush, five on your side. Let's get back to Scott. Oh, we have just had the most beautiful stretch so far of this fall weather and the people saying, make it even colder, you might have the answer for some. Well, yeah, it is going to get a little bit cooler for the next couple of days. We'll have highs only in the 60s. The sunset, though, this evening, we had a few of those clouds passing over, and it's been just like this, you know, passing clouds, not a whole lot of it, but bright skies in general. Gorgeous sunset tonight looking over Forest Park. 75 was our high today. We're not hitting 70 tomorrow, and we'll be cooler than that 49. 49. Last time we were there was May 2nd. Last time we were in the mid 40s, that was back in April on the 27th. It's been five months, so we have some cool weather on the way. Look at Springfield, Illinois, already down to 44. It's 52 up in the Quad Cities. Kirksville's 51. We still have temperatures that are holding in the 60s, but a frost advisory in effect not far away from us. Getting up towards Quincy, getting over to Springfield, Peoria, going up through much of Iowa. That's how close it's getting. But for us, skies are mainly clear. The cool flow continues, and of course, all eyes on the tropics as we see Hurricane Ian now working its way probably most likely coming ashore tomorrow morning around Fort Myers, and that's going to be a big problem for the folks down there. We're at 61 degrees in St. Louis. The dew point temperature is 42. That's in the ballpark of where we could end up tomorrow morning in some spots, especially away from town. There's going to be some places that go down into the mid 30s. We're thinking there might be a little patchy frost perhaps, but for most of us, we're going to elude that for the next couple of nights. Nonetheless, it's pretty doggone chilly the next couple of mornings and you'll definitely need a jacket tomorrow. There's a bit of a breeze still not all that gusty, but winds will be out of the north northeast at 5 to 10. We hold in the 60s for highs tomorrow. That's courtesy of this big, huge high pressure system that's around the Great Lakes. It's basically keeping us dry. It's also keeping this storm down to the south here, which will move across Florida. Ian will then spread heavier rainfall into the mid Atlantic region eventually towards the end of the weekend and into next week. So you've got all kinds of weather happening in the southeast. And for us, here we are looking at pleasant conditions and an absolutely gorgeous weekend ahead. Lots of sunshine the next few days. Very chilly starts, but during the afternoon hours, we're in the 60s tomorrow and Thursday. By Saturday and Sunday, we're back into the mid to upper 70s. Humidity staying low. Most of us could probably use a little bit of rain at this point, but it doesn't look like that's in the offing for us. All that moisture is tied up in the southeast. All right, Scott, thank you. Sports is next. I just can't remember a more enjoyable regular season. I can't. In addition to the historical moments for Albert, Yachty, and Wayno, you have a championship. We had it all, including the clincher in Milwaukee this evening. The Cardinals had their ace on the mound tonight, Miles Michaelis, and he had his game working. Here he strikes out Garrett Mitchell. Miles struck out nine. He was out of sight. Andrew Kisner was 
0 for his last 22 before that swing. It's a two-run bomb in the fourth inning, and the Cardinals, just like that, let it four to nothing. Paul Goldschmidt is breaking out of his slump. Two RBIs, including this single in the fifth, which extended the lead to five to nothing. He doubled a little bit later in the game. And Ryan Helsley got the final out. The Cardinals win it six to two. They are Central Division champions. For more on the clincher, let's check in with our Ahmad Hicks, who's covering his first Cardinal celebration. Ahmad. Hey, Frank, I'm actually standing next to Miles Michaels, and I just told him that you said he was out of sight tonight. He said, thanks, Frank. Thank now, first important question, how many beers have you consumed tonight? Probably only about two and a half um, inside my body, but okay. probably about another dozen or so um, on the outside. How many are you going to have once we wrap up this interview? Uh, maybe like two or three more. I'm okay. not a huge drinker. Uh, maybe smoke a cigar back at the hotel. I got you. Uh, but, you know, I got a big day tomorrow. You know, we clinched, right. but I got a big day. Uh, you know, run, work out, um, you know, it's time to celebrate, but it's also not time to uh, cut loose too much. Uh, we got a lot of important games ahead of us. After speaking with several guys in this clubhouse, everybody kept talking about how they didn't want to celebrate too much tonight because you guys have a bigger goal in mind. How do you obtain that goal and make sure this isn't the last champagne celebration? Uh, we've got to keep our nose to the grindstone. Uh, you know, go out there, uh, you know, get after it one day at a time. Uh, never look back and give it our all. I was speaking with Albert Pujols and Adam Wainwright. They said this is how the season was supposed to end. Did it feel like the season could end any other way than with the division title? No, not at all. Um, we've got, you know, such incredible veteran leadership with, with Albert, Yachty, and Wainwright here. And, you know, some of those guys, if it's going to be their last go around, we just want to make sure it's a really special one, uh, one they can hang their hat on and, and feel really happy about the end of their careers. And I know all the guys that, that aren't retiring this year, <laughs> uh, you know, Pretty much everybody else, um, you know, that's our goal is to to give them, uh, you know, the most incredible send off that that they could have imagined. Why was it important for you guys to get this game done, uh, get this series wrapped up tonight, pretty much, and win the division? Uh, you know, it gives us a chance to, you know, kind of, you know, maybe rest some guys and take care of our bodies here these last couple of games, get everyone uh, teed up for the playoffs, and uh, you know, celebrate in Milwaukee. I think they celebrated um, at our place, uh, you know, last year, a couple years ago. So I uh, just want to return the favor and, you know. Get it done quick so we can enjoy our time here in Milwaukee, enjoy this nice cool weather, and uh, head back to St. Louis on a, on a strong note. Payback is always sweet. One final question. You guys may see the Brewers again, or San Diego, or yeah. Philadelphia. Does not matter who you play at this point? No, I think we we feel really good about how we're going into the, um, uh, into the playoffs. I know we, we've competed with the Phillies um, all year, and we just had a really competitive series in, in San Diego. I think we're, we're poised for, for a good run here. and. Uh, you know, World Series or bust. All right, we'll get back inside and celebrate. We All appreciate right. it, Mike. Thank you so awesome. much. All right, Thank Frank, you. that'll do it from here in Milwaukee. Let's send it back to you guys so we can get back in the locker room and get more post-game celebration. All right, Ahmad, thanks very much. And that man, Miles Michaelis, will likely be the game one starter in the postseason. And if the playoffs were to begin today, it would be next Friday at Bush Stadium. It would be the Cardinals and the Phillies. And I'm telling you, I don't think many teams want to see this Cardinal team in the postseason, especially and if they can get their starting pitching going. And that man is one of the keys, along with Jack Flaherty and Quintana and maybe Adam Wainwright. It's important now. He said it's so important to get this season wrapped up for Albert, get everything that he deserves. That was really nice to hear from Miles. Yep, and that's why Albert came here. He didn't come here to hit 700. He came here to play in the postseason because with the Angels, he didn't see many postseasons, only one. He comes back here and they win a championship. Unbelievable. All right, Frank, thank you. We'll be right back. Happy Meals are not just for kids anymore. Starting Monday, for a limited time, adults can order a Cactus Plant Flea Market Box. It comes with a Big Mac or 10-piece McNugget, along with fries, a drink, and even a toy. You'll get a reimagined Hamburglar, Grimace, Birdie, or the new Cactus Buddy. Toymaker Hasbro has adults in mind as it gears up for the holidays. The company is focusing on nostalgic toys and collectibles. Hasbro expects strong demand on brands from the 70s and 80s like Star Wars, G.I. Joe, Transformers, and Hot Wheels. It's only September 27th, but Tillis Park is already starting to look like a winter wonderland. Crews have started stringing more than one million holiday lights. Winter Wonderland opens for its 38th season on November 18th. You can buy tickets now by going to the As Seen on TV section at KSDK.com. Final check with Scott. 
And you know, it's not really feeling all that winter like right now, which I guess is a perfect time to be putting up, you know, the lights better now than when it's really cold outside, right? So the next couple of days, all quiet weather around the St. Louis area, plenty of sunshine. Occasionally we get a couple of passing clouds, but it will be cooler than average. Highs tomorrow and Thursday stay in the 60s for most of us. Overnight lows for some of us will drop back into the mid to upper 30s. Think we'll just escape frost this go round. It is a bit early for that for sure. By the weekend, we're back into the upper 70s. It looks like a delightful weekend weatherwise around St. Louis. Thank you, Scott. That is five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Jimmy's guest tonight, Kelly Ripa. Start your day with today in St. Louis beginning at 4 a.m. Have a great tomorrow.